Alright, it should be going. I feel like... I'm less scared about it this time because I'm not so... Right. You're a little like, having a hard time getting everybody on the edge of it. I hope the sound sounds okay. Do you need some more lighting? No, I think it's okay. Wait, what? Yeah, it looks okay to me. I'm a, I've never like checked the sound, but I assume it sounds okay, right? I'm gonna take my mask off. Is that cool? watching it back, it was like mostly you guys talking, which is good, but there wasn't really like mm -hmm. silence. So maybe like, when you think like two seconds after, mm -hmm. just like a thought, if that's something that we want to like add in. Because um, it kind of felt like watching it back, like, and also I realized when I was thinking about myself as a facilitator, kind of felt like everyone was interrupting each other. Uh, maybe like, oh yeah, and, because we were all like so excited to add to it. Um, so I think that would leave more space for the facilitator. It's hard to like, I was thinking about this in a group the other day, like it's hard to pretend that we're in a situation where we can actually feel like the power differential that we expect and like feel nervous about sharing in front of the facilitator and like be trying to contract with them and like get them to be in power because none of us are doing that because we know it's not safe. Mm -hmm. But maybe we can try to like fake it a little bit to make the facilitator shot. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good I mean, I remember that the the group, the conversation that we were having was mainly about your self disclosing experience or whatever. So I feel like there was a lot that people wanted to get out. So I probably that probably the reason yeah. why it was so like complimentary to what we were kinda of adding mm -hmm. to what was already being said or sharing our insights. But what you said when you really when you said it was so important for me and my, it made me feel so much better. It gave me a different way to look at it, like to suggest that does anyone else have another way to, that what else could you do rather than what you did? And, and that was so helpful and it was like perfect timing too. And it was sort of a way to like not have to say to me, well, maybe you didn't do the best thing, but maybe you could do this. You didn't even have to say that. Just, just what you said was able to enabled me to see other ways to do it mm -hmm. without having to feel bad that I did it wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't like even, I, I just want to stick it, I don't think you did it wrong. Like, I think what you did, did. was one I walked, way. I brought the, it's, like at the time it sounded it like it shut everything been, down though. Like, instead of asking her like, wow, that was like really tough. Like someone had suggested, wow, that was a really tough thing you just said, um, you know, did you care to, found on that or is there anything else or does anyone else want to say anything um what i did was just shut it all down so that we had to actually go on to a different subject so i don't think that what i did was the most effective thing but i'm okay with that because like sometimes you have to experience and get caught up in a moment like that to realize why yeah. it's so important to really think about what you say before you say it um when you're trying to yeah, um, intervene yeah and I think that will become reflexive too like once you have the experience I think it's easier to sort of anticipate you know a response so. it's already easier just from talking about it with this group because it was really bothering me and now it's not now I feel much more brave about it you know about what to do like taking that deep breath and say okay what what else can I ask rather than self-disclosure how can I get can I get them to tell me to talk more yeah. in the silence? Yeah, and I think that it was probably so what, what you were just saying about everybody just chiming in because we were like being supportive to you. So and that's I felt why that. I that's so why I think it was like that. I think in that in that um, situation or that topic that week, it was like, all right, we were supporting you. So I, that's why I think maybe that um, came across in the video yeah. or that from that critique that um, mm -hmm. you received. And then he was smart. I mean, he's been talking about all semester, but just being like, okay, like, we're 
where do we think this group is going? We've been talking about this. Like, we don't know about this, but just like remembering that. And yeah, then, it's, um, it's true, and like, yeah, so I was thinking about this a lot this week too, and like, when you actually try to do it, it's really hard, when you're not just like, I don't know, intentionally, like you have to kind of intentionally stop the group and be like, so, what do you guys think, and can you give me some feedback, and no one ever wants to, that's what I run into, so I'm really interested actually if any of you have had experience with successfully getting feedback. Yeah, I did. I asked too. at the end of my group. I asked exactly just that. Like, so mm -hmm. I just want to ask you girls, how how did you do? I mean, how are we communicating with you? And um, they answered that they really got a lot out of the session, and it felt good to hear that. It really, really did. Yeah, but how do you get like cons like this like constructive critical feedback? You know I what I mean? Without asking. Oh, my students. Cool, I guess. Maybe that's what the best I, way, right? Well, yeah, one of my students was fed up with what I was teaching and like, trying <laughs> to get put Sorry. into the group, and he was like, no, he was like, I'm sick of this. He's like, instead, you should do this, this, and this. And I was like, wow, okay. He was like, tell me more about it. <laughs> wow. But, yeah, I mean, I didn't. I'm good on you for not but, like reacting yeah. defensively or anything. I feel like that would yeah. be kind of jarring. I was like, yeah, this is great. And I was like, writing stuff down and like making his like sayings and points. Oh, cool. so he felt like it was important and like, like he was being heard and everything so yeah okay. interesting. I do wonder though if they say oh everything was great you did great if they're just saying that because yeah. they think that's what you want to hear yeah, exactly. like, like you said how do you know if it's critical like that's all I ever get to yeah and it's like I mean maybe it's just true and maybe I should be more positive about it because I mean that's like something for me to consider too but but usually I'm like oh they're not really giving me feedback <laughs> Or maybe they don't want to like Ooh. say something bad and like hurt your feelings. Yeah, so, maybe. Like, no, you're going to suck. Yeah, I, yeah. But yeah, yeah but I feel like I don't ever really get real feedback. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and I, I put myself in that position, and I don't think I'd want to give feedback either if I like somebody. Um, sorry, <laughs> we didn't want to be like. I'm just fixing the timer. That's it. Oh, okay. I know that one of our uh, our cringe <laughs> moments was people having Every side time. conversations, and I was like, we're doing that right now. Anyway, she set the timer for 14 hours instead of 14 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I why we were crying. Glad you caught it. Right I away. fixed yeah. it. <laughs> she called it. I fixed it. It's fine. Good job. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So let's listen. Yeah. Feedback. Yeah. 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 Yes, so um, <laughs> at the end of the group, at the end of the group, I usually have said like, "So how is this for you all?" Um, like about specific things. Yeah, I would okay. say, or I would say, "How was how was how was this topic?" How, or literally like checking in, like, "How do you guys feel after talking about this?" That's a good. I really like. That. And then I they would just it. go. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever thought of that. I always yeah, just sort of general, like, yeah, yeah, got any feedback from me, but that's, a, that's mm -hmm. good. Yeah, Especially I was thinking it's like something specific that there was some kind of like tension mm -hmm. or discussion around. Yeah, I loved how my supervisor did it yesterday, especially for um, the trauma group. It was more like, okay, well, I, let's, I just want to check in with you all. Did our topic today, um, how did our topic today make you feel? Did it trigger anything for anyone? Um, does, have, does anybody have anything that they want to share? And then that's how we ended with that kind of feedback. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. It's kind of a hard thing to do. Like, once you do it, it doesn't seem like it. But I don't know that I ever would have thought of doing that. Right. Weirdly. Just blatantly being like, yeah. what do you think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, no. what am I doing? Is that, was it okay? And I think people are kind of taken aback by it. I would imagine, like, especially one on one, I've never tried mm -hmm. that. But, like, I was going to say, yeah. Um, I don't have experience with group work, um, but I work with like individual clients and foster care, so I do like home visits, and some of them are old enough that like we just sit on the couch together and we talk for like 30 minutes, and one of my clients is like 15, and she's just like, loves me and just wants to talk, 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 and it's like, I love it so much, <laughs> but, because um, I didn't get that last semester, but um, she, at the end of the thing, I was like, I'm sorry if I came off nervous, like I am an intern, but like, did I do okay? This was like the first, you're basically my first real client and it's, it's, it's new for me. And she was like, oh my God, you're great, I love you. And she's 15, so she's like, it's just yeah. awesome because 
But she actually said something like she was like, my grandma and grandpa, you know, like they don't speak, like I don't speak their language and blah, blah, blah. So it was just, it was nice to get like honest, like someone who's like, I just appreciate having someone else here. So, um, yeah. What do you mean, like grandma and grandpa? You mean like she lives with them? Yeah, so she's uh, um, like a kinship uh, foster care. So she's with her grandparents, but they speak Portuguese and she doesn't. Um, so there's like a huge wow. language barrier, especially yeah. with like DCF and myself and like, she only knows a little bit of it. And so, you know, it's better than being with where she was before, but it's difficult now because it's like very religious grandma and like yeah. th barriers there. But that was a little off topic. But either way, it did It did feel, I think it depends on the client individually, like if you're comfortable enough with them, but I had to sort of just like humble myself and be like, look, like this is all a learning experience. Um, I just want to know, did this feel therapeutic? Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah. So. It's good, I guess that's awesome. Thing too. I mean, right? That's there. Right. It can help them. Yeah. And I, I mean, depending on the context, but yeah, yeah like in a trauma group, I think that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree with like just thinking like how Cameron always says all this stuff is new, and it might feel like a little weird or different. And, but it's like after I I did it the first time, used any of like the strategies after the first time, then I'm like, oh, it's fine. Because then I see how the clients react to it, and they respond to it really well. So yeah. then once I do it, I'm like, oh, yeah, right. And also <laughs> like just the like just the shaking up of what people expect. Like mm -hmm. I can see when I ask for feedback, and again, like I don't really get super, you know, probing answers. But just like if people seem like, what? What are you talking about? And it seems like the kind of thing that would shake people into moment of honesty maybe and mm -hmm. the whole physically motivation piece mm -hmm. or actually like oh you really care what i think about this yeah mm -hmm. it's like you want to know how i feel like what i yeah, think about what you too. did like yeah. it's not just all about you and like the curriculum and you being the facilitator in control like you're actually like, concerned about what they what they feel or what you can do better yeah for them so i think that's what that communicates to them Definitely. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. And you'd be, like, you'd be surprised. How, my voice cracked so much. <laughs> you'd be surprised how little people like actually are asked like how they feel on a regular basis, like outside of a therapeutic setting. I'm mean, like I I've been asking that like for over like years. Like it was never like how are you. It's like how are you feeling. And every time I did that to like new people that I just might be like, why are you asking me that? I'd be like, because it's important how you feel, you know. And they were like, it is important how I feel. So it's. It's like not something that people think about to just be like, how are you emotionally? It's like, it reminds me of, I was watching this thing on positive social risks. So it was like, just go out into the world and engage somebody in like a genuine conversation, like something like that in a way that they're not expecting. And like maybe you'll just totally belly flop and it'll be weird and awkward, but more likely it'll just be like really authentic and sort of like stick out as a moment of connection for mm -hmm. both of you. It's an interesting idea. Like, yeah. If not in therapy, then where, but, mm -hmm. but just in general. Yeah. Like how many people engage in small talk in a day and then how many people enjoy engaging in small yeah. talk? Yeah, probably a big discrepancy there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to touch on what he I just want to say one last thing about yeah, when you yeah. ask somebody how you are. Mm -hmm. It's like um, most people when they ask that, they really don't want to hear the answer. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people are obligated to say that I'm good. And I, I remember having a friend that was English saying, I will always learn to say that I'm good, whether I'm bad mm -hmm. or I'm good. And I, I just, because I, I don't know, I, I guess I wear my emotions on my face, but if somebody asks me how am I doing today and I'm having a bad day, <laughs> there is no way I can say good. I just mm -hmm. can't say it. I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm fine. No, I'm not fine. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> the cancer, I'll find I'll something else to say. But yeah. I can't say good. I'm not good. Um, but I notice a lot of people do. Yeah. And a lot of people who ask you how you are, they really aren't waiting for the answer. They're like, oh, how are you? And then just turn around and start talking to somebody else before you ever even have the chance to say yeah. you know, whether you're good or not good. It's a script. I mean, it's like literally a script that you're supposed yeah. to follow when people act like you're putting them out if you stray from it. Mm -hmm. Is it also a way to like avoid stuff? Yeah. Like, you know, like, Definitely. Absolutely. That's what scripts do. Right. Mm -hmm. to, to 
not get at the source of what yeah. the problem is because then I put myself in a place of being judged or even more unwanted. Yeah, you put yourself out there. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Those like, hi, how are you exchanges are like, probably to be frank, it's like a covert contract. They are, sure. Yeah, if, you're, if you answer the way they expect you to, mm -hmm. then you're saying something about how you're willing to yeah. follow the script in, in a lot of ways, probably. Yeah. yeah. Conform. Basically yeah. say, I'm a sheep. Let's yeah. do it. And if you answer, sorry. Yeah, no, or my problems don't matter, or you can't help me with my problems anymore. Right. Yeah. What's the point of the show? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, and if you answer the way Charlene was talking about, like, you know, it could be taken in a few different ways, but maybe someone would be like, wow, you're really brave and authentic. Seriously, like, I'm sure people respond that way. And then there's probably people that act like, what the hell are you doing? You know? Sometimes you just get a meh. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's kind of a good barometer for like, you know, whether you want to engage with somebody authentically in the future. Yeah, because a lot of times they won't ask me why the meh, why not okay. <laughs> not that I want to talk about it, but like if you're, you know, I, I, I don't care if you want to hear it or not. I, I, don't, I don't always want to talk about it either. But if you ask me how you're doing, you know, and if you say, nah, um, you know, some, you would expect someone to say, oh, that good, huh? Yeah, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry you had a bad day. Or yeah. you know, yeah. something, even if they didn't want to hear everything you had to say. Yeah. And I'm not looking for them to listen to it either. It's yeah. Just, they, I'm not going to lie. They just literally said the words without even thinking about what the phrase means. Exactly. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just to back to what we were talking about in class um, and this is a tough topic like I don't even know exactly what I think about this yet I feel like I need to digest it so I'm curious what you think but these this idea of pulling and like being pulled into responses um, and roles in therapeutic situations and I'm trying to think about it in terms of this group too I know I struggle with this like every week you know and I want to talk about like the I run or whatever and I don't know why that is but maybe it's because I don't classify this as like like I was saying before like there's not the same tension and like differentials and roles so I feel like we all just kind of get along and it doesn't really have being jumped out okay but what do you what do you guys think like in general or in terms of this group I guess with the polling what do you think we all Even now, you guys are all nodding, but I think like there's never really like any sort of disagreement, which I feel like would bring us to like more in depth conversations. Because whenever, even right now, you guys are like, yeah, yeah, like, mm -hmm. we're all yeah. very like agreeable, which is which is definitely good. That I Although I, I did have to disagree with Jess when she said that you didn't do anything wrong, and I felt like I did. So yeah. I honestly think though, if any of us disagree I think that we're comfortable enough to say hey I, I might think a different way or you know you know let's look at it this way or you know what you yeah think. and I mean at least to for my part to explain a little bit like I think last time I did say something about like a different way to think about that but today when you said you did it wrong I reacted very strongly to you like saying I did it wrong and I kind of wanted to I don't know if I did a good job communicating to you that like didn't do it wrong. I don't think there's any such thing. And like what you did, I didn't do it the best way. But you, it had some but that's positive. Okay. It had some positive effects. Like you told us. It about did. Them. She didn't have to feel alone. So, so it was that. Like maybe just like you being. It sounded like you were being hard on yourself. That was what I was reacting. I'm not really trying to be hard on myself. I'm trying to understand because I, I, before I self disclosed, I was really afraid of self disclosing. And so now it's like I kind of faced the worst of it. <laughs> I don't have to be so afraid of self-disclosure anymore. And also how to self-disclose, what to self-disclose. Um, I'm feeling much more comfortable because of, of that conversation. And yeah, it was embarrassing and it did make me feel vulnerable. But at the same time, it also made me feel elevated because all of you cared so much about my confusion and my pain in that. And, what did and you, that made me feel so much better. What did you, just real quick before we finish, um, I'm curious, like, what did you think about what we 
we were saying to you before about like the like we were asking you, um, you know, why why you think you felt like you wanted to sort of like do that. It seems like you feel like a very like visceral need to like try to rescue someone from their pain when they're discomfort when they're discomfort in discomfort or in pain or and I was wondering if you reflected on that or like what do you think of that or if you think that's true or what do you think? I just always have been the underdog. I always do this the underdog. I always think hey I'm gonna help you be stronger. You know, because I don't want anyone to be at the bottom alone. That's why you're a social worker. Do you think it makes someone stronger though if you rescue them from their pain necessarily? I don't want to rescue them. I want to suffer with them. Mm, that's interesting. And I want to suffer with a smile and strength and integrity and character and help them to do the same so that they stand up and say, I'm strong. So I will humble myself in order to help somebody else be strong. I, I believe you. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's flat on the ground if someone told me to. If it would help them. <laughs>